We're now in Module 9 about circumference, area, and volume. This is 9.1a. The name of the lesson is Exploring Circumference, but I'm making it Exploring Pi and Circumference. A circle is a set of points in a plane that are a fixed distance from the center. Each point is the same distance from the center. So a circle, if you saw a solid line like that, we can actually think of it as so many points that they look blended together. A radius is a line segment with one point at the center of the circle and the other end point on the circle. The length of the radius is called the radius of the circle. You can see we've got an R for radius. A diameter of a circle is a line segment that passes through the center of the circle, and whose endpoints are on the circle. They lie on the circle. The length of the diameter is twice the length of the radius, and the length of the diameter is called the diameter of the circle. So a diameter is equal to two radii. Radii is the plural form of radius. It's more than one. So we can say D for diameter is equal to two times R for radius. That means the radius is equal to half the diameter. The circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle. We use a capital C for circumference, D for diameter, R for radius. So here's our diameter, here's our circumference, here's our radius, here's the center, it's the very middle. So notice that we use an uppercase C for circumference and a lowercase d for diameter and a lowercase r for radius. We can use a measuring tape to find the circumference of circular objects. That's because they're so pliable, they bend so easily. I measured a can of peas, the circumference of a can of peas, and I got 9 and 1 16th inches. I also measured around a wall clock that I have, and it was 27 and a half inches. Then we can measure across each object to find its diameter. The can of peas had a diameter of 2 and 7 eighths inches, and the wall clock was 8 and 3 fourths inches. Now, if we don't have a measuring tape, we can use string. We mark the length of the on the string for the circumference, then use our ruler to measure to our mark on the string. We can record the measurements in this table. We have our object, our circumference, our uppercase C, our diameter, our lowercase d. Then we're going to find the circumference divided by the di diameter. So one object I had was a can of peas that was 9 and 1 16th inches for circumference. And as a decimal, it was 9 and 62 thousandths of an inch. The diameter was 2 and 7 eighths inches which is 2 and 875 thousandths of an inch. So we may need to convert fractional measures to decimals. I don't know if you remember how to do this, but I'm going to have this linked in the description, the video to 6th grade math 5.5b, where we learned how to go from fractions to decimals. Now, when I did the circumference divided by the diameter, I got approximately 3.152, and it went on and on and on. So I put an approximation symbol, and I just ended it there. The wall clock, my circumference was 27 and a half inches, or as a decimal, that's 27 and 5 tenths inches. The diameter was 8 and 3 fourths inches, which is 8.75. It's 8 and 75 hundredths inch. When I did the circumference divided by the diameter as decimals, I got approximately 3.142, 3.142 and 142 thousandths. So for the last column of the table, we divide the circumference of each object by its diameter, but we may need to convert fractional measures to decimals. So when I did the division, the circumference divided by the diameter for the can of peas, I got approximately 3.15 to the nearest second digit, to the nearest hundredth, and when I did 
the circumference divided by the diameter for the wall clock, I got approximately 3.14, 3 and 14 hundredths, rounding to the nearest hundredth. Both approximations are a little more than three. We have three and a little more. We have three and a little more. Now, this symbol is the symbol for pi. You may already know that. Pi is the ratio, ratio of the circumference of a circle to the length of its diameter. C divided by D is equal to pi. The circumference divided by the diameter is equal to pi. This symbol is approximately 3.14, this pi. We can also say it's approximately 22 sevenths as a fraction. Pi is a non-terminating decimal, and as of August of 2021, a few months before I made this video, a supercomputer calculated pi to 62.8 trillion digits. So here are the first 500 digits of pi. Look at this, 3.14159265, and it keeps going on and on and on. There's 500 digits of pi here, but it's been calculated up to 62.8 trillion digits. We use an approximation symbol, this double wavy line, when we write calculations from pi because we can't write all the digits to be exact and use an equal sign. Now, this part can be confusing to some, but I'm hopefully going to explain it very well so it won't be confusing. So sometimes we use the approximation symbol we have 2 pi is approximately 2 times 3.14, which is approximately 6.28, 6 and 28 hundredths. Well, that's because we're not using all the digits of pi, so we're going to use an approximation symbol. If we had half of pi, or half times pi, it's approximately half times 3.14, which is approximately 1 and 57 hundredths, and that's because we're not using all the digits, we're only using 3.14 as an approximation of pi, so we've got the approximation symbol. But if we use the pi symbol in our answer, we can use an equal sign because the symbol, this symbol for pi, represents every digit of pi. However many digits of pi there are, this symbol represents all of them. So if our circumference was 27 and 5 tenths inches, we could say it's equal to 2 times pi times the radius. And we can use pi in our answer because this symbol represents every single digit of pi. Okay, we finished 9.1a. We're going to move on to the second part, 9.1b, finding circumference. To find circumference, we need to use pi. That's why it was so important for me to explain it to you. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you join me for the second part of the lesson. Bye.